A reading from Isaiah chapter 49, verse 13, and chapter 47, verse 4. Rejoice, you heavens, and celebrate, O earth. Cry out with praise, you mountains, for the Lord will have compassion on his poor. Our Redeemer, the Lord God of power and might, is his name, the Holy One of Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. From a Treatise Against Heresies by Irenaeus The Plan of Redemption Through the Incarnation God is man's glory. Man is the vessel which receives God's action and all his wisdom and power. Just as a doctor is judged in his care for the sick, so God is revealed in his conduct with men. That is Paul's reason for saying God has made the whole world prisoner of unbelief, that he may have mercy on all. He was speaking of man who was disobedient to God and cast off from immortality and then found mercy, receiving through the Son of God the adoption he brings. If man, without being puffed up or boastful, has a right belief regarding created things and their divine creator, who, having given them being, holds them all in his power, and if man perseveres in God's love and in obedience and gratitude to him, he will receive greater glory from him. It will be a glory which will grow even brighter until he takes on the likeness of the one who died for him. He it was who took the likeness of sinful flesh to condemn sin and rid the flesh of sin as now condemned. He wanted to invite man to take on his likeness, appointing man an imitator of God, establishing man in a way of life and obedience to the Father that would lead to the vision of God and endowing man with power to receive the Father. He is the Word of God who dwelt with man and became the Son of Man to open the way for man to receive God, for God to dwell with man according to the will of the Father. For this reason the Lord Himself gave as a sign of our salvation the one who was born of the Virgin, Emmanuel. It was the Lord Himself who saved them, for of themselves they had no power to be saved. For this reason Paul speaks of the weakness of man and says, I know that no good dwells in my flesh, meaning that the blessing of, us, of our salvation comes not from us, but from God. Again, he says, I am a wretched man who will free me from this body doomed to die. Then he speaks of a liberator. Thanks to Jesus Christ, our Lord. Isaiah says the same. Hands that are feeble grow strong. Knees that are weak take courage. Hearts that are faint grow strong. Fear not. See, our God is judgment and he will repay. He himself will come and save us. He means that we could not be saved of ourselves, but only with God's help. Listen to the word of the Lord, you peoples, and proclaim it to the ends of the earth. Say to the far-off islands, Our Savior is coming. Proclaim the good news. Let it be heard. Tell it to everyone. Shout it aloud. Say to the far-off islands, Our Savior is coming. To Christ our Redeemer, who will come again to free from the power of death all those who return to Him, let us humbly pray, Come, Lord Jesus. As we proclaim Your coming, Lord, cleanse our hearts of every vain desire. Lord, may the church which You founded proclaim Your greatness to all peoples. Your law is a light to my eyes. 
Let it protect those who trust in you. You allow the joys of your coming to be foretold to us by your church. May we receive you with eager devotion. We do ask these things as you have taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Father, you show the world the splendor of your glory in the coming of Christ, born of the Virgin. Give us true faith and love to celebrate the mystery of God made man. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> 